Yes, everyone, I am back, and if you look closely at my neck, look, I'm wearing the fourth doctor's scarf yet again. Yet again, look at that length. Look at that length. I thought it was only fitting because I'm going to be doing a video on, just for like talking about one of my favorite doctor and companion relationships, the fourth doctor and Leela. But what brought this on, though, when it comes to the companions and talking about discussions? Well, it's because, guys, something magical happened. Guess what I got in the mail after getting it on eBay? <gasps> the image of the Findal. Sorry for the brightness that's coming away. The image of the Findal. Mm -hmm. Yep, guys. I finally have the fourth Doctor story with Leela from their second season. The story I have been desperately, desperately wishing to have for so very long, but never thought I'd have. I got lucky. Here's the story about how I owned the image of the Fendal. Well, luckily, someone sold their copy on eBay, but instead of doing an eBay bid where they placed bids on it, no, they placed a set price. And whoever chose a set price, thank you. Okay, well, look at me. Thank you. Because it was first come, first serve. Whoever sees the listing first, they get the story. I saw it, paid $25 for it, worried that when it came in the mail, it was going to be defective. Because you guys know, I've been having some bad luck with defective videos of Doctor Who coming in with my last two copies that I purchased of the Keeper of Trocken not playing. And that was devastating for me. Each time I got the Keeper of Trocken, slipped it into the DVD player, and then it kept not working. I had to send it back. I was devastated every time because I really liked the Keeper of Trocken. And then came Image of the Fendal. Now, guys, with this one, I'm not going to lie, I contacted the seller first, and I asked the seller, I said, is this defective at all? Because I really want the story, and if it's defective, it'll break my heart. He said, I promise you it's not. He said, I promise I will mail it very well. He did. It came in the mail, and you're thinking, wait, it doesn't have a DVD actual cover? No, it does not. Somehow he must have lost the real DVD cover. But you know what I say to that? Who cares? As long as it's properly, you know, functioning, as long as it does not skip on me, I'm fine. And I put it into the DVD player, completely panicked. My heart was pounding. It was like, oh my gosh, what's happening? Is it going to work? Boom. Is it not going to work? Is it going to work? Not work. Ba-boom. 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 And then it came on and it started working. Yes, image of the Fendal. The DVD is working, therefore that's all that matters. Then I was watching the special features of it where, once again, there was Louise Jameson, the actress who played Leela, giving a fantastic interview. And that's the thing I love about Louise Jameson. That woman is very good and very open to giving a lot of interviews about her character and her time on the show. And those people saw Image of the Fendal, you know that there was a new costume she was given for that episode, and you also know that her, her hair was up. Her hair was up for almost the entire episode because when she got her hair cut by the hairdresser, for some reason, the hairdresser ended up cutting off four inches. So the director or like the product producer said, okay, let's, let's put her hair up. So by the time we get to the very last episode being filmed, her hair will have grown out a little bit. So her hair was in that bun the entire time because the hairdresser just cut off too much hair. And with her costume, Louise Jameson actually got, um, she consulted about the design of her costume. She said, I wanted it to be practical, so I asked for shorts. So the way the, the costume works is she had shorts underneath that, you know, very... <laughs> very high skirt dress, so she could just pull it down so she could go to the bathroom easily. And she had such good things to say about, you know, working on the show, even when she and Tom Baker would get ar argue with each other, she still has great memories of the show itself. And her attitude towards the show shows just how much it explains just why much, for me, it made perfect sense. Why? The producers, the directors, everyone who worked on Doctor Who did not want her to leave. People often, when they see the last episode of hers, Invasion of Time, she and the Doctor are very separated, but also she and the Doctor, well, it comes to the ending, the ending is kind of abrupt, where the Doctor's leaving, and then all of a sudden, Leela abruptly leaves. There's no build-up to her leaving, just boom. The reason why is because the writers specifically were hoping that she would change her mind. Everybody, I don't know about 
about Tom Baker, but the production side were hoping Leela, Louise Jameson, would change her mind about leaving the show. So they wrote her to be doing all these things, and they saved the last episode for her leaving, because they did not want her to leave, but she chose to still leave anyway. And it was not against the show, even though she and Tom Baker would argue sometimes, and it could be very heated debates and they were not always connecting, behind the camera, it did not mar anyone's love for her behind the camera besides she and Tom and Tom Baker her relationship with him is very difficult to explain because sometimes they would fight but other times they got on very well and I like that this is a pr prime example of taking the sweet with the sour and dealing with it and rising above it because they rose above it so much that so much of their era together they work to they, they just they act together very well there's a chemistry there that is astounding. It is fun to watch. And I like watching them a great deal. And they do connect more often than not. 95% of the time, their acting together is amazing. And it's electric to see them together. So, with Leela, she's a character who just... And here's where I'm going to the next part of my video. Does not get enough love. And what I call middle companion complex. When I hear people speak of the fourth doctor, people mostly mention or remember Sarah Jane Smith. And every now and again, I hear somebody mention Romana. But I don't hear many people ever, almost ever talk about Leela. Except for those of us on my channel or in like, you know, in the hardcore classic who knit a lot. Sorry, burped for a second. Yeah, that burp just came out. Okay, here we go. Mm. But with... Um, Leela, when it comes to modern audiences, they'll know Sarah Jane Smith, and that's because of New Who, because she gets the most talked about. When it comes to the companions from Classic Who, especially the fourth Doctor companion, she's the one people talk the most about. Leela is someone a lot of us just discover by incident, or by accident, if we start getting into Classic Who, if we were not already into Classic Who. But... She's not often regard, uh, held on high on a high pedestal when it comes to a lot of companion listings. And sometimes, I've seen some companion lists rank her pretty low for those who are idiots. Sorry, no offense, but if you rank Leela Le low, you are kind of an idiot. <laughs> no offense. God, no offense. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, moving on, moving on. But <laughs> when it comes to Leela in this, it's weird, but... This is something I'm kind of noticing often when it comes to Doctor Who. Very rarely are the middle companions or the companion who came after the first companion ever regarded on the same pedestal as the first companion. When we have like the first Doctor, I hear way more people mention Susan, his granddaughter, than they ever mention Vicky. Even though I think he and Vicky had a much stronger relationship. And the second Doctor is the only exception because the first, first season is missing a great deal. So people often don't remember Polly. Um, they'll go to Victoria mostly. But they look at her probably as the main first companion because of so much of the Polly one is missing. For a lot of people who do not get into the second Doctor era that much. And they watch it on face value. And sometimes Zoe is the companion that mostly a lot of us people who really, really get into Classic Who she's the one that we notice but when it comes to again the fourth doctor onward there's a lot of a lot of really importance put into the first companion but when it comes to us as an audience we the second companion either gets overlooked or is immediately met with hatred and antipathy and something I notice, especially with companions like Leela, she gets overlooked and lost in the shuffle with, you know, a lot of people nowadays reflecting on Classic Who. But also the same thing goes with Martha Jones and Clara Oswald. And those were very vicious. Um, immediate, the fan base hated those companions immediately. And it, it makes you wonder, it's like people, and we humans, by, by our very nature, we have a hard time accepting change. And I wonder if simply the middle co companion complex of having a hard time accepting or being open to this new companion because your heart already belongs to the previous companion. But when it comes to the middle companion complex, with pe and this is something I see with a lot of middle, middle companions, but Leela, Martha, and Clara especially, the dynamic of the relationship with the Doctor changed very drastically between the first and second companion. With Leela, Martha, and Clara, the likes of them, the doctor met all of them when he was not in the best place. With the fourth doctor, after the deadly assassin, the master, he defeats the master, but the master does get away. Yes, 
However, also with the face of evil, Leela meets the fourth doctor at a time where he's not at his strongest point because he's on an adventure where it turns out he solved the very problem that has led to all this, all these issues. He is literally the reason why this civilization is the way it is and it's in cr a crappy condition. So he's not at his strongest place. And then you have the 10th Doctor when Martha meets him. He's not in his strongest place either. He's an emotional train wreck all the time. He's not always good at functioning on his own. And he kind of needs stability. Then you've got the 11th Doctor who is fresh off his... Lo not fresh off completely, but still fresh enough off of his loss of the ponds and River Song. You have these, the middle companion meet the doctor when he's not in a stable place. So she has to come with a stability herself to help him stabilize and therefore keep going. Leela is a very stable character. She's almost similar from the very beginning to the very end. Martha, I know there's a change that occurs with Martha, but it's not because of Martha's own doing. It's because of the doctor that she changes because the doctor puts her in a place where he keeps making her feel second best to when she should not have to be forced to feel this way. So of course she's going to change, but that's an external, like that's not something that happens organically. It's more like the doctor put a change on her that was inevitably going to happen because of how he treats her and not because of the experiences she has by traveling with him. But again, they do, there is a, there is a change and Leela does change as well, but there's a gradual change. And I'll, show, I'll speak to that about that in a moment. But then we got Clara, who she comes to the 11th Doctor and eventually the 12th Doctor already pretty stable in who she is. Even if she's not like, you know, computer savvy when he first meets her, every incarnation it's a woman who's already really strong who she is and as she is. And the fan base hates them immediately, I know, but I don't I think they were the perfect not well I don't know how people look at Leela. I know at the time children loved Leela. Um, I highly doubt she went through any hatred when they f she first came on as companion. I mean, I'm sure there were some people who were butt hurt that Sarah Jane Smith was gone, but I don't know what the relationship was or what the you know what people felt towards Leela when she first came out because I was not born yet, so I do not know. But I'm looking about the past when it comes to the idea of looking at the past from our present and how we view Leela now and how she does not get enough love. But the second companion needs to be more stable than the previous companion from the very beginning to be there for the doctor when he's not at his most stable point. It's about the doctor regaining stability while he's with them in some way, shape, or form, or learning himself. In each in circumstance, not so much with the 11th doctor, but with the 4th and the 10th doctor, and a bit with the 11th doctor, you have a companion who he, uh, you know, kind of falls into an adventure with, and she ends up saving his life as much as he saves hers. And he tries to walk, he tries to leave them. He tries not to come back for them, but he ends up going on adventures with them anyway. All three women. It ends up happening. He initially was hesitant, but then he ends up, you know, they end up being his companion. And with that situation, it's always fresh off a loss of a previous companion he felt a deep affection for. But also, with those three women, they all, while they do in some ways grow off of him, like Leela grows to rely more, just as much on science as she does on instinct in her feelings. And Martha does learn to realize, no, she does not deserve to have to put up with this crap. She can leave. And Clara does grow herself into being like the doctor himself in that, and that leads to arrogance being her downfall. That being said, he learns from them. The fourth doctor does learn from Leela, whether he likes it or not. And he ends up eventually embracing her barbaric side, even when he claims that he doesn't. He utilizes her barbaric side. He, he gets inspiration from her. Again, he, it, he uses her. She, he does need her and rely on her in a very great deal. Same with Martha. He wants to go out there and show Martha all he knows and like shows how he's an incredible incredible thing. But Martha ends up teaching him things, but she ends up saving him a great deal, but teaching him the important factor. He can be wrong and honestly, he's not all that. The tenth doctor, not all that. And he needs to get off of that cloud really quickly because honestly, this is her getting out. Then with Clara Oswald coming in, you know, he Doctor is at a place where he thought he was perfectly fine all by himself. But Clara teaches him he is still a social creature. Something about the the 
middle companion meets the doctor at a place of crisis, and yes, they he rubs off on them, but they rub off on him, but in a way where he comes out of it stronger than he was in the true way, and not weaker. But that that's a theory, guys. There's no evidence behind what I'm saying. This is me having a fun time and theorizing about middle companion complex. And sometimes there are companions who end up being more iconic than the ones who came before or after them. That is very true. But I'm just saying that there can be a fun pattern to think about here sometimes. And the idea of the middle companion being the one who the fan base is never going to remember and love as much as the companion who came before her. However, she does deserve just as much love because she gets the doctor in a time where he's not at his strongest point. That's all I'm saying. And Louise Jameson, back to her as Leela in her time with Tom Baker, the fourth doctor. I... Every time she has an interview, I just love her so very much. This woman is just incredible. And even though she left the show and she did have a successful career after the show, to this day, she's iconic in the acting world. But it's not just that. She still admits, though, she loved her time on the show, but when she was told she left, she now wishes that she had not left because she did love the show. And when she was asked to come back and be the companion to the fifth doctor... She was asked that. She said no, but now, but later on she was like, you know what? <laughs> I should have probably done that because this was a great character. She loves Leela. Even as she left, she came back to play her in Dimensions in Time. She does, was there for like, audios and like, you know, Big Finish and all that. Or, you know, adventure, other adventures. She's a, she is really prominent or she's really outspoken in the Doctor Who commu community. And showing a love for being meeting the fans, which is always spectacular. But one thing I love about Leela... Louise Jameson, I mean, as Leela, is when asked about her costume, she is perfectly fine with it. She's like, honestly, like, okay, in the 21st century, if a character wore a costume like that in the 21st century, people would label her, label her as, oh my god, just there for eye candy, and it's, I can't believe that Doctor Who did this. But Louise Jameson said, even though her feminist side of her should be freaking out about that costume, she's like, no, I think that costume was perfectly acceptable for Leela, and it made sense for her. Louise, thank you for not letting political correctness destroy all happiness. Thank you. It's like she's a feminist and Leela is a tough, strong woman. However, she, at the same time, Leela, Louise Jameson, is not so much devoid of humor that she's going to let that get in the way of the fact that this costume did work for Leela. It really did, and she looked amazing in it, and she kicked ass while being in it. Another connection, I think, of her to her to Martha and Clara is Leela was a very instinctive character. She fo did things based on her feelings. She would follow her feelings. If she sensed something was wrong, it's something usually was. Martha and Clara have the same instinct if you go back and look at them. They can sense when things were wrong when they first came aboard. Like, M Martha sensed the doctor had a had a different heartbeat probably somewhere else. Clara could sense danger. Both Martha and Clara could do it. But because Martha and Clara are 21st century characters, the instinctive habits they have that could belong to that of a huntress, to the audience might seem kind of contrived, but it actually goes back to that instinctive, primal nature of us humans that Leela possessed really well. Again, that's a theory. This Nothing I'm saying has any probably <laughs> theoretical validity to it. Guys, I'm just talking to have fun. Let me have fun. I like having fun. I just do. So guys, I own now the image of the Fendal. It, it is awesome. I'm happy. Leela will always be one of my favorite, if not my favorite companion. She, with the fourth doctor, will always be magical. And she's one of my favorite companions to write when I do my fiction. So guys, do you like Leela? I hope you do. If you don't, you're still cool. But those of us who love Leela, please do not be afraid to let me know down below in the comment section. Bye, guys.